Good morning, everyone. I wanted to give you some more uh, encouragement from the Psalms, and today we'll be looking at Psalm uh, chapter 11. In the Lord I take refuge. How can you say to my soul, flee like a bird to your mountain? For behold, the wicked bend the bow. They have fitted their arrow to the string to shoot in the dark at the upright in heart. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes see, his eyelids test the children of man. The Lord tests the righteous, but his soul hates the wicked and the one who loves violence. Let him rain coals on the wicked. Fire and sulfur and scorching wind shall be the portion of their cup. For the Lord is righteous. He loves righteous deeds. The upright shall behold his face. What jumps out at uh, me in this uh, passage is verse 3, actually. Um, if the foundations are destroyed. Uh, here the psalmist, uh, in keeping with a lot of the psalms, is dealing with terrible unrest. Uh, and this time it's, it's external, actually. He looks out uh, at the world and he sees uh, the foundations are, are coming uh, down around him. What does this mean uh, precisely? Well, uh, it means, I, I think quite simply, that uh, a time has come in uh, the psalmist's world where all the normal protections and uh, safeguards that the people of God normally feel, feel and have experience in the past are now starting to fail. The... Uh, Today's English version translates verse 3 this way. There is nothing a good man can do when everything falls uh, apart. Sounds familiar to uh, a lot of us uh, here today. Uh, I'm sure like you, I, I feel uh, somewhat dumbfounded that uh, everything has changed so quickly in our world. Uh, all the uh, normalcy, at least uh, as we've defined it, uh, now is seemingly gone. Everything is, is different. Uh, times have changed. And uh, there's no uh, end, seemingly, in sight of, of how uh, these certain protections that we once knew and loved are, are uh, ever going to return again. At least not in the measure that we uh, think they will or have experienced them in the past. So uh, what do we do with that? Uh, how do we respond? How do we react? Well, first of all, uh, the psalmist tells us here in verse 1 that we respond with faith. In the Lord, I take refuge. We take refuge in our faith. We know that even though the foundations of the world are falling around us, our faith points us to something more secure than even that. But then notice also something. It, it tells us something about the nature of uh, life and how faith interacts with that. You'll notice in verse, uh, the end of verse 1, uh, there's uh, quotations, and uh, apparently there's some debate uh, over who is quoting this or where the quote begins and, and ends. Um, but I'm of the opinion, actually, I think that, that this quote is coming from the friends of those uh, in the covenant community, those people, those Christians, those men and women of faith. Uh, here's their response to the crumbling foundations of society. Uh, Run away, they're saying. Flee to the mountains like a, a bird. Uh, look at the, the enemy that's out there. You need uh, to take off. You need to get out of here. Uh, fear is their response. And, and undoubtedly, there are times in life when uh, fear is great, when the enemy is, is so strong that we do uh, need to retreat. Uh, but how do we know when that is uh, uh, possible, when that is the reality, and, and when we are to stand our ground? Well, uh, ultimately, this is a matter of wisdom. Uh, we uh, look at society today, there, there's, there's nothing easy. There is nothing that we don't 
uh, quibble about and fight about. And, and you know, the, the days I think of middle ground uh, on any issue uh, are essentially gone. Uh, even something like wearing face masks and gloves now seem to be points of contention in our world. How do you know? What, what's, what's the right thing to do? Do you wear a mask? Do you not wear a mask? Do you uh, go out in public now that restrictions are being eased off or do you not? Well, ultimately the Bible, I think, tells us that these are wisdom issues. Uh, Philippians 1, 9 and 10, Paul says, And it's my prayer that your love may abound more and more. So love needs to be in everything that we do with knowledge and all discernment. Uh, again, wisdom, being able to tell what is right and what is wrong. Why? Verse 10, so that you may approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. They're not easy decisions to make, but ultimately we need to be wise and discerning, praying for God to give us wisdom that we might make the right decisions. And then uh, once we have made these prayers, once we have uh, sought the Lord's uh, wisdom in these things and, and, and seek to be discerning, then uh, there's, I think, a very overlooked part of the Christian's life. And that is our conscience. God gives us a conscience. He guides our hearts largely through our conscience. That little voice inside that tells us uh, right from wrong. You have to trust your conscience ultimately. Is it, is it telling you? Is it leading you to uh, uh, wear a mask or not wear a mask? To come to church or not come to church. Uh, these are ultimately matters of conscience, and we need to be uh, aware of that. We need to be listening to that. We need to be trusting that. And we need to ultimately, since there is such uh, variance and difference of opinion, let love rule the day and not uh, be uh, too harsh on those, perhaps, that, that want uh, more protections. But at the same time, those that want more protections need to be careful not to be uh, too harsh on those uh, that want to see an easing of protections, uh, uh, an easing of restrictions, and uh, maybe not wearing uh, masks. So that's ultimately where uh, I think we need to leave it as a matter of conscience and, and trust your conscience, trust in the Lord. Uh, verse 4 goes on, and, and really this is where we need to get to. This is where we need to rest uh, in uh, this. The uh, uh, eyes of faith, where we see and, and, and uh, uh, faith points us to uh, realities maybe not seen just yet. But notice how the psalmist says it here, verse 4. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes see, his eyelids test the children of man. The psalmist points us to God's throne uh, in, in, in a way of telling us that God is ruling. He rules still, that we have this certainty in life uh, that God uh, is on his throne and he's continuing to rule. Uh, that, in other words, when the, the foundations of, of our lives seem to be crumbling, uh, God is still active. It's not a result of his inactivity. God is still present. He's still active uh, in all of this. Um, it, it shows us that God is not distant. He's not a God that creates and then steps back and, and retreats. No, God is active in this world. He is uh, present. Uh, what is he doing with his presence? Well, we're given a glimpse. His eyes, we're told, he, he still sees. Uh, uh, in verse 4, it talks about his gaze. God is searching still. He's, he's involved. Uh, and his eyelids test the children of man. He's still present in your lives, active and present in your life. Uh, all of these things God is still doing because he still reigns on his throne. 
He goes on in verse 5 to give us further encouragement, and maybe not the type of encouragement that a lot of us like to dwell on, but it's encouragement nonetheless. Uh, verse 5, the Lord tests the righteous, but his soul hates the wicked and the one who loves violence. Let him rain coals on the wicked. Fire and sulfur and a scorching wind shall be the portion of their cup. Do you see what he's saying here? He's saying that ultimately there is judgment that God brings upon those unrepentant sinners, those who practice wickedness, uh, those who do not repent of their sins. There's judgment coming, and they ultimately will be destroyed. Now, yes, this makes some of us uncomfortable, but, but here's the truth that this psalm is expressing, that unless and until total judgment comes on this world, there will not be total and absolute peace for us uh, in uh, life. So, uh, in this world, there will always be temptations, there will always be wickedness, there will always be the effects of sin in our lives. But God promises that he is coming again. Jesus is coming again this second time, not as savior of the world, but as judge of the world, to make good on those promises that we do not yet see, but we trust with faith. That God is ultimately bringing peace to this world. But until that day dawns, we must continue to press on in our faith, trusting the promises that he has made. Uh, again, I've, I've quoted Dale Ralph Davis before. He tells a story in, in one of his commentaries about uh, the Scottish uh, preacher named William Dyke. Apparently early on in his life, uh, there was an explosion in a, a factory where he was working that left him blind, completely blind. But regardless of his disability, he continued to press on in his academics, uh, became a licensed and ordained uh, preacher, uh, met a woman, a, a very lovely uh, girl, was engaged to, to be married to her. Uh, and at uh, this point in his life, right, right before the wedding, in fact, uh, uh, Dyke was, a, uh, was, a, was approached by a surgeon who had been developing a new uh, cure, a new surgery to fix his uh, uh, blindness. And so he entrusted his, himself to uh, the surgeon. Uh, the surgery was done, and apparently, as the story goes, uh, he had to have uh, bandages over his eyes for several weeks after the surgery. He didn't know if it, it worked or not, until, uh, as fate and providence would have it, uh, the day of his wedding, the bandages were removed, and the man could actually see. And so the first time he laid eyes on his bride was as she was coming down uh, the center aisle of the church to marry this man. Now, I think in our modern world, and especially among uh, younger generations, stories like this can be quite uh, traumatic, uh, to be perfectly honest. Uh, how can you marry somebody that you've never seen? And I think maybe the natural uh, next question is, well, what if she was uh, ugly coming down uh, uh, the aisle? Uh, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't you want to have seen her first? Well, maybe, perhaps, uh, but I, I don't think so. Because here's a man who got to know this uh, young lady who spent time with her, who fell in love with her, uh, and knew her quite uh, uh, well, uh, of her at least, uh, before uh, ultimately laying eyes on her. Uh, and as uh, we look at the rest of the story, I mean, they were wed and spent uh, over 50 years of, of wedded bliss together uh, in uh, this marriage. I think... Uh, this uh, kind of shows us uh, the way we live our lives in this world right now. We have not yet seen Jesus with our own eyes, uh, but yet we have uh, uh, the capacity and the ability to know him uh, so well, to love him as this man loved 
his bride without ever uh, seeing her with his eyes. This is how faith uh, operates. This is how we're told that we operate in this world of trouble. And as the foundations seem to be crumbling at the moment, this is where we must ultimately put our faith. Uh, uh, even though we can't see Jesus, we know he's here. And we know the promises that he has made to us. And we know that one day soon, he is coming back uh, to uh, wed us, his uh, beautiful bride. Revelation 22, 4 describes it in this way. Uh, we will see his face and his name will be on our foreheads. If you go to the end of uh, Psalm 11, this becomes even more uh, apparent. And I know we're, we're running out of time here, uh, but uh, if you'll just allow me one or two more minutes more to make this final point. Uh, verse 7, the Lord is righteous. He loves righteous deeds. The upright shall behold his face. You notice the uh, where he's pointing us here at the end of this psalm. It's not just that we look to God for safety and protection. Those who are called to be God's uh, sons and daughters uh, seek God for his fellowship and seek his face. That's what it means. Behold his face. We don't just want God to save us and protect us. We desire to be with him. That's what fellowship is. We long to be together as a church family. And this whets our appetites for uh, being in close fellowship with God for all eternity. Uh, this is the ultimate fulfillment of uh, Jesus' promises, that is that we will behold him. Revelation 22, face to face. We will see him. We will spend intimate fellowship with Jesus, shoulder to shoulder, um, in physical, renewed bodies for all eternity. Uh, this is the promise fulfilled ultimately. Even though we can't see it yet, we trust that uh, it will come true because we've been given the gift of faith. So in Psalm. Uh, faith needs discernment and to filter out uh, the voices of fear in our lives. Faith needs vision to see God reigning on his throne. And faith needs hope uh, to uh, anticipate uh, the fellowship that we will uh, one day have, uh, even though we can't see it yet. So th those are the promises of Psalm 11, and I pray and I hope that they encourage you today. So be blessed, uh, and be safe, and we'll uh, see you all very soon. Take care.